For joining us on the news at four, I'm Morgan Romero. Thomas Creech, Idaho's longest serving death row inmate, was scheduled to be executed at 10 a.m. today. But that didn't happen because they couldn't get an IV line. It's the first unsuccessful execution in state history. This is what happened from what witnesses inside the execution chamber explained. Early Wednesday morning, Idaho Department of Correction medical staff prepared for Idaho's first execution in more than a decade. Our medical team did a physical assessment of Mr. Creech. Uh, after that assessment, they had communicated uh, to me as well as Warden, uh, Warden Richardson that, that they believed and had confidence that they would be able to establish venous access on Mr. Creech. At 9.50 a.m., witnesses, including four members of the media, were brought into the execution chambers. Creech's wife, Leanne, and we're told his stepson were brought into a separate area. At 10 o'clock, staff brought Creech into the room on a gurney and placed him on the execution table. A few minutes later, he was covered with a white sheet. It's reported he made eye contact with his family, even subtly waved his hand while his arms were strapped to the gurney. At 10.04, the medical team started their assessments, hooked up an EKG machine, and prepped Creech's right arm for the IV. In the walls, there are some holes where the IV tubing goes into the medication room or the medical team room, which is actually behind the execution chamber and is not visible to us. At 10.11, that first IV in his right arm was established. But two minutes later, medical staff said it was unsuccessful, so they tried again. When that didn't work, they moved to the left arm. At 10.31, they moved to his legs. What they encountered in some instances was an access issue. Uh, but in others where they could establish uh, access, they were unable. Uh, it was a vein quality issue uh, that made them not confident in their ability to administer chemicals through the IV site once established. At 1041, members of the medical team left the room to get more supplies, including needles. At 1054, Creech lifted his head from the gurney and told the medical staff, My legs hurt a bit. When Mr. Creech noted discomfort uh, with his leg, uh, he was experiencing a cramp, uh, and, and the medical team uh, worked to try to assuage that. They tried again, but they were not able to get a needle into a vein after a total of eight attempts. And at that point, they removed the sheet that was covering his legs, took off his orange, uh, like, slide-on style shoes, um, pulled up the, his green scrub style pants, and then worked around the um, hook and loop style straps that were restraining both of his ankles. At 10.58 a.m., the prison's warden announced the execution would be halted. He pulled Director of Correction Josh Tewald aside. It's unclear what they talked about. This isn't a do-it-at-any-cost process that our first objective is to carry this out with dignity, professionalism, and respect. When it reaches a point in that process at any step where it looks like we're going to be unable to do that, that's when we call it off. It, it wasn't a difficult decision. It was the right decision. All witnesses were escorted from the chambers and Creech was taken back to his cell. His death warrant expires at 11.59 Wednesday night. Tawalt said members of the medical team have done an execution in Idaho before. So what happens now? IDOC's director says Creech was moved from F block at IMSI to medical so his wife could visit him and they're preparing his longer term housing unit. I've reached out to IDOC to ask exactly what that is. The state says they're currently considering their next steps. Shortly after the failed execution, Creech's legal team filed a motion to stay his execution in a statement. They said in part, quote, we are angered but not surprised that the state of Idaho botched the execution of Thomas Creech today. This is what happens when unknown individuals with unknown training are assigned to carry out an execution. They went on to say this is precisely the kind of mishap we warn the state and the courts could happen when attempting to execute one of the country's oldest death row inmates in circumstances completely shielded in secrecy despite a well-known history of getting drugs from shady sources. You can read his attorney's full statement right now at ktvb.com. You heard me say his legal team called the execution botched. However, during the news conference this afternoon, the director of the Department of Correction, Josh Tewell, who you heard from, pushed back on the term botched, instead calling it, quote, unsuccessful. Our goal is to do this in a, in a manner befitting the gravity 
of such an occasion, uh, such an occasion, and attempting to try to move forward with an execution uh, when you don't have the confidence it can be carried out in that respect, I think that would be the definition of a botched execution. Governor Bradlittle issued a statement about the execution. He wasn't there today, but a representative from his office was. Little said in part, quote, the team of professionals at IDOC was prepared for the possibility that medical professionals would not be able to access the inmates' veins, a circumstance that has occurred in execution procedures elsewhere in the country. The competent and qualified medical professionals present and IDOC officials were cautious and did the right thing in not moving forward with the execution.